Section 2.5 is all about what we call implicit differentiation. Implicit, sounds like kind of a mouthful, but goal for today is we're just going to find these derivatives, what we call implicitly. Well, what does that mean? Implicitly means um, we've got to kind of work around things a little bit. It's, it's there, but we have to dig at it a little bit. So let's say that, you know, I give you problem number one. This is probably one that makes you really, really happy. What's the derivative with respect to x? Well, I would start by writing my dy dx, Mr. Perkins, because you yell at me about labels, and I would say that derivative is 2x. Yes, I feel really good about it. Okay, well, what happens if I show you number two? What a lot of people say with problem number two, well, first off, what are we doing? We're taking the derivative with respect to x of y cubed. So a lot of people look at it, and they'll kind of ignore the fact that we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and they'll write down, oh, well, this is going to be 3, bring the power down, uh, subtract 1 from the power, 3y squared. Technically, what I just have written down is actually incorrect, because we're taking the derivative 3y squared would be the derivative of y cubed with respect to y. We want to take the derivative with respect to x. So what's going to happen is we're going to have to work at this a little bit harder. For example, if I'm taking the derivative of this thing with respect to x, let me rewrite this thing. Let's say that I said y was the same thing as um, 4x minus 7. Let's say that that was the case. Well, if you rewrote this problem, then what you'd really be taking the derivative of would be, well, what's being cubed? Well, 4x minus 7 is being cubed. So if I said I want you to find that derivative, well, that derivative, you'd do chain rule. And that derivative would say, well, you'd have to put the 3 down in front, square, and then, well, inside you'd have a 4x minus 7, and then you'd also have the derivative of the 4x minus 7, which would be a 4. So if we tried to kind of follow this along a little bit, you've got this y right here that would be represented by the 4x minus 7. But what we're missing right here would be the derivative of y with respect to x. And so this is the tricky thing. This is the thing that you kind of have to get used to is we're taking the derivative now with respect to a specific variable. Well, what happens if that variable is not explicitly defined? So implicit differentiation is used when we don't have y by itself. Okay, either, because, either we don't or we can't get. And so we've got to, this is kind of our, our little bit of work around here. Um, a little bit, and, we're, and this is going to be a little confusing for a little while, but I'm hoping that example, too, that I just showed you where you have this blue y inside of the y cubed function that you have to remember to do chain rule with is, is kind of our little trigger. So if a function is defined explicitly, that means I've got y by itself. So explicitly means y is alone. Implicitly, and you'll notice that these two things are the same equation, One of them has y by itself, and one of them doesn't. Well, if I said I wanted you to take the derivative of the explicitly defined one, you wouldn't think that was that big a deal. If I said you've got to take the derivative of the implicitly defined one, well, now what, what exactly do I do? Well, your first step would probably be to try to get y by itself, which is a good idea. But what happens when I can't? So when we look at problem three here, you're not going to get y by itself in this problem. And so with this implicit differentiation, that we're talking about, and we don't get, have y by itself, what we're going to do is we're going um, you know, to treat each variable as its own function of x. Okay? Every function, y is its own function of x. So everywhere you see a y, you need to picture, like we did up here, a little 4x minus 7 or something crazy like that. So when I come down and I look at this problem number three, everywhere that you see a y, we want to think about this as having its own function of x. Now I'm going to make this a little bit, I'm going to zoom this in a little bit so it's easier, so I have a little more space to work. Um, but everywhere I see a y, I want to think about that blue function of x that I had. So there's y's all over the place in this problem. So when I go to take this derivative, so I'm going to start, I have x squared times y, but remember y, we're going to think about 
we're going to pretend that y is the same thing as 4x minus 7. Now notice I said pretend that y is the same thing as 4x minus 7. So if I had x squared times 4x minus 7, well, the first thing I do is I distribute, or I'd use product rule. So for this first term right here, we're going to need to do product rule. So my product rule, well, that's going to mean that I'm going to take x squared and I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of y, which would be dy, or with respect to x, dy dx, plus my y times the derivative of, of x squared, which would be 2x. So this right here is the derivative of x squared times y. Plus, now I've got to take the derivative of y squared. Well, what's the derivative of y squared going to be? Derivative of y squared is going to be 2y dy over dx. Why do I have 2y to the first, sorry. I'm taking the derivative of what I see, which is y squared, which would be 2y to the first. And then remember that y is its own function of x. So there's a y inside there, and then I'd need to take the derivative using chain rule. So every y is its own function of x. So if you pictured right here a 4x minus 7 being squared, you'd take 2 times the 4x minus 7 to the first times the derivative of the 4x minus 7. And then when we get to this term, we've got x times another function of x, so we're going to need product rule again. So when we go to do product rule again, we're going to take x and multiply it by the derivative of y, which would be dy over dx, and we're going to add to that y times the derivative of x, which would be a 1. And we're going to set that then equal to the derivative of and this is getting a little bit ridiculous, derivative of yet another product rule. So this one's derivative. Well, let's see. I'd have to take x and multiply it by the derivative of y squared, which would be 2y dy dx times dy over dx, plus that y squared times the derivative of x, which would be 1. So if I can't get y by itself in a problem, then I take the derivative of each individual term, treating y as its own function of x, pretend like it's 4x minus 7, and then once I get that part taken care of, now I couldn't rearrange at the beginning, so we rearrange at the end. So now look what you've got. You have, oh my gosh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms. 7 terms. How many of them have dy dx? Well, the first one, the third one, the fourth one, and the sixth one will have dy dx. So now your challenge is, since you couldn't get y by itself at the beginning of the problem, now get dy over dx by itself in the middle of the problem, and then we'll have our derivative. So all we've done is we've changed the order of how we're doing things, and uh, we'll kind of mess with things a little bit. So I'm going to take, I'm going to rewrite this. So my first term, x squared dy dx. Uh, this y equals 2x, let's move this to the other side of the equation by subtracting it, uh, plus 2y times dy over dx, plus x times dy over dx. This y I'm going to move to the other side of the equation by subtracting it. This term that has a dy dx I'm going to move to the left side of the equation by subtracting it, minus 2xy times dy over dx. And that's going to be equal to, well, let's see, this uh, y squared is already here. We subtracted a 2xy, and we also subtracted a y. And just like magic, well, look at this. These, all these terms on the left side have a dy dx that I could factor out. x squared plus 2y plus x minus 2xy. And I'm going to set that, and that is equal to y squared minus 2xy minus y. And now, if I go through and I divide y squared minus 2xy minus y over x squared plus 2y plus x minus 2xy, and even though we couldn't get all that mess alone to start with, we were able to isolate the derivative of that equation 
when it was all said and done. Well, that's our first little taste of implicit differentiation. Last problem using implicit differentiation on this first day uh, is going to get a little bit more complex here simply because in this problem we've got some things nested and we're going to use again multiple rules. So here's what I see. Here again is my, my y that I was talking about. And here's another one of those y's. Well, let's take inventory. First off, I see that first y is being multiplied by x, and then we're taking the cosine of it. The second y is inside of sine. So derivative, I'm going to start by taking, well, a cosine of xy, I'm going to need chain rule. I've got xy inside of cosine. So I'm going to start with the derivative of cosine. Derivative of cosine is the opposite of sine of something times the derivative of the inside or inside, I'm going to now need, well, I've got x times y, so I'm going to need a little product rule. So my product rule, x times the derivative of y, which is dy over dx, plus y times the derivative of x, which is 1. Whoops, sorry, this should be in red. So wait a second. So derivative of cosine I took care of. X derivative of xy I took care of. Now what was inside of cosine? Well, x times y was inside of cosine. So let's put that back inside of the derivative of cosine. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the derivative of sine of y. Derivative of sine of y. Well, that's Start with the derivative of the outside, derivative of the outside would be the derivative of sine, which would be cosine. Well, what was I taking the cosine of? I was taking the cosine of y. So there's your derivative of your outside function. Now multiply that by the derivative of your inside function. What's the derivative of your inside function? Well, that would be dy over dx. And now I'm going to set that equal to the derivative of tangent of x. Well, the derivative of tangent of x we've done lots of times before secant squared of x. Now here's the tricky thing. Some people look at it and go, how come I don't have to do a chain rule with tangent of x? Technically you do. What's the inside function? The inside function is x. What's the derivative of x with respect to x? Well, that's 1. So if you wanted to, you could say that this x is being multiplied, or that secant squared of x is being multiplied by a 1, because that's really its derivative. So now, we've done this nasty derivative, and I would bet that I'm going to have lots and lots of questions about this when we talk in class. Uh, but now I'm going to go through, I'm going to start trying to clean it up using algebra. I'm going to start by distributing this thing and then see how many terms I have. It looks like after I distribute I'm going to have three. So how about negative x times dy over dx times sine of xy plus the opposite of y times the sine of xy plus dy over dx times the cosine of y is equal to the secant squared of x. Now why, Mr. Perkins, did you, did you reverse the order in this term right here? I reversed the order because what a lot of people think is that I'm taking the, the cosine of y times dy over dx. I'm not. I'm taking the cosine of y and I'm multiplying that value times dy over dx. So that's why people will go through and they like to write the dy over dx or the things that aren't involved in the trig function in, fun, in front of the trig function itself. Uh, so now what do we have? Well, I see uh, one, two, three, four terms. Uh, how many of them have dy over dx? Two of them do. So let's take the ones that don't have dy over dx and let's move them to the other side. And then we're effectively going to do what we did in the previous problem. Let's take the dy over dx out. And how many of them terms do I have left? I have negative x times the sine of xy plus cosine of y. And again, remember, I used followed that red arrow and moved this other term to the other side. So I have a secant squared of x plus a y sine of xy. And to finish this mess off, uh, let's see, how about if we divide by that quantity? So my final dy over dx, my final derivative, secant squared of x plus y sine of xy over negative x sine of xy plus the cosine of y. And uh, you can see that the water's starting to get a little bit deeper 
when we start sticking the algebra functions inside of trig functions and we can't get y by itself. So that's kind of a nasty one. 